So, do white lives matter? Do only black lives matter? You know, since the advent of the, the smartphones that can do video, streaming video live, and load, that, load it to the internet while it's being recorded, one would have never known of all these many, many instances of horrible crimes by the police. You know, they call it police brutality, but when you shoot an unarmed, handcuffed person in the back that's on the ground, that's not brutality, that's murder. Uh, it's, you know, there's a, the uh, Black Lives Matters movement has some very legitimate gripes. I'm beginning to think, you know, maybe maybe we ought to do what England does with the bobbies and disarm the police. There are some of the videos that I've watched live on, I mean, not live, but that I've watched on YouTube is just appalling of the police and how they're acting. The, um, it's just, and the police destroy. If the police see you recording, a lot of times they grab the uh, cameras and they destroy them. They confiscate them, erase all the stuff, if they don't destroy them outright. I saw one where a cop grabbed a video from one guy, put it on the ground, then stomped it and smashed it into a bunch of pieces. But there was another, somebody else that was uh, recording that he didn't notice that was a little bit further away. I mean, there's just literally thousands of these things. Police are just out of hand. But they're not just doing this just just the blacks. They're doing this to everybody. So, what does the Bible say about... Uh, does white lives... Do white lives matter? Well, let's take a look. All right, in 1 Samuel. Now, you have to ask yourself. Who carried... The Bibles all over the world. Was it Africa? Did they print the Bibles and distribute them all over the world? No. Was it Japan, China, Asia? No. It was Europe. Did you know that the King James Bible is the most printed book, the most widespread book in the history of the world? And that was printed by England. I mean, there was absolutely hundreds and of millions of copies of the King James Bible printed. Hundreds of millions. We don't even know how many. Now, there's been at least one year that the NIV outsold the King James Bible in America. But historically, from the time that it was first printed, it is sold. Well, uh, there's been and not necessarily sold. It's been given away, sold. But there's been hundreds of millions of copies. There's no other book in the world that's been printed more traditionally than the King James Bible. And that's the one that I trust. I like the Geneva. I like the Webster's Bible. Yes, Webster, the dictionary guy. You ever heard of him? He did a Bible, too. And it's the most hated Bible why? Because Satan and his helpers will tell you, oh, well, you know, it's outdated, it's no good, the we modern versions are better. Yeah, the modern versions fit better with the modern church world. So, did you know that in Strong's Concordance, he did a dictionary on all the Hebrew words. The word Adam basically means white. Did you know that? It's the Hebrew word 119, 120. Uh, Hebrew words 119 and 120. Adam, Adam. It means to show blood in the face, i.e. flush or to turn rosy, to be dyed, made red, ruddy, ruddy, keep, remember that word, ruddy, and to be able to blush. Now let me ask you a question. What group of people blush? Um, people from African descent? No. Now it is true that there are Asians who can, um, when they drink, they turn flush, they will turn red. Uh, let's go to Hebrew 120, Adam. 
from uh, 119, and that means ruddy. So what does ruddy mean? We'll find out in a second. 1 Samuel 17 and verse 42. And when Goliath, the Philistine, Goliath was that giant, and when Goliath the Philistine looked about and saw David, King David, future King David, King, this is David the shepherd, coming to King uh, Goliath with a sling and five stones. This is David the shepherd, the future king of Israel. And if you don't know it, Jesus was of the line of David. David, King, King David was probably the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus. Maybe I did too many greats. I don't know. Maybe I didn't do enough. But he was a direct descendant. Jesus was a direct physical descendant of King David. First Samuel 17, 42, And when Goliath the Philistine looked about and saw David, he, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. In Webster's 1828 Dictionary, you know, Webster was a language scholar. The guy knew probably half a dozen to a dozen languages. I mean, he knew all the root words. He knew everything. Guy could read Latin, Greek, Hebrew, uh, English, German, um, Spanish, and Italian. This guy knew. He knew words. And English is a mix of many different languages. Matter of fact, we get our word Adam from the Hebrew. Because that's how you pronounce it. Adam. Adam. That's how you pronounce it in the English. And it's pronounced the same way in the Hebrew. So, he was a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. What is fair countenance? It means fair complexion. Do Africans have fair complexions? No. Ruddy. What does that mean? Having a healthy reddish color. A ruddy complexion, i.e. rosy red blush. You ever heard, oh, that Irish girl has a nice ruddy complexion. She's got red on her, you know, reddish color on her, in her cheeks, right? What do you women like to put on your face? It's called rouge. What is rouge? Rouge is, rouge is the French word for red. Don't women take red blush rouge and put it and dust their face with it? So, if David was a relative of Jesus, well, is there a place in the Bible that describes what Jesus looks like? Oh, yes, there is. But guess what? They'll explain it away and then deny what the Bible plainly says. Revelation 1 and verse 14. And if you want to read the entire first chapter of Revelation, you can plainly see that this is talking about Jesus. His head and his hairs were white, like wool. His head and his hairs were white, his head, head and his hairs were white, like wool. And of course, the black Hebrews would say, yeah, see, his hair's like wool. It's curly and it's kinky and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, well... Wool is like that, but it says his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. What color is snow? White. You ever seen black snow? Well, you can, but you got to go up to New York when, with all the air pollution, right? His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Song of Solomon. Now, Solomon was um, a son of David. He was also a descendant of, of Jesus, right? Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousands. I'm sorry, the chiefest among ten thousand. Lamentations. You ever heard of Samson? He was a, a Nazarite. A Nazarene? Well, Jesus was called a Nazarene. Samson was a Nazarite. He took a Nazarite vow. Lamentations 4 and verse 7. 
If you don't know what Lamentations is, it's a book in the Bible. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. Okay? Unless you take uh, Hershey's or Nestle's and put it in milk, milk's white, okay? Unless you make chocolate milk. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in their bodies. I'm sorry, their body. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Rubies are red people. Their polishing was of sapphire. So, why is there all this unlimited third world immigration into the USA and Europe? That's a good question. Why do they? Want, why do the evil ones want to flood our land with all these immigrants? Think about it. Who printed the Bibles and built all the churches? Did Africa build the the, the churches? No. White people went from Europe and went to Africa and built churches. Who printed the Bibles? Well, originally it was Gutenberg, a German, and first book he printed was the Bible. Who printed the Bible and built all the churches? Asia? No. It was Europe and the United States, obviously. So, do white lives matter? Well, let's keep going. Do you know that the black nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, has called all the white people are the actual, physical, literal seed children of the devil? And he's calling for actual open war to kill all the whites. The black Hebrews, um, they don't believe in the Quran, but they basically leave, believe the same thing. They think that white people we're the children of Esau, children of the devil, and that we need to be killed. In many African countries, Haiti, um, so-called Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, whatever they call it now, and what's currently going on in South Africa, the um, they've murdered, basically, all the white people they could get their hands on. Uh, it's going on in South Africa right now. Um, Nelson Mandela, the darling of the media, he, uh, his favorite saying was kill the Boer. And the Boer was the, um, the farmers from Holland that came to South Africa. And what they don't tell you is South Africa was barren when they got there. There was no blacks. They, import, they came in afterwards. But they lie about that too. But the black Hebrews are calling for open war against whites. The new Black Panther Party is calling for open war against whites. The, the uh, Black Lives Matter, they're calling for open war against whites, too. So, do white lives matter? Well, uh, who, who, what's going on here? You know, if King David and Solomon and Jesus were... Um, if they're head and they're white as snow and ruddy, uh, who are the people of the book? Well, let's take a look. Does it matter? I mean, does race matter in the Bible? Is it? Is it just you know? Well, why is it every? Why is it only white people can be racist? What's up with that? Turn to Revelation chapter twenty-one and verse one. Let's see who's going to get into the. The kingdom of God. Let's take a look. Well, before we read Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1, starting in verse 1, I strongly recommend that every family own a firearm to protect their family. Now, yes, Jesus said that if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword, but Christians don't live by the sword. But you know what? I've had people tell me, oh, well, we're supposed to be pacifists. What? Somebody breaks in your house and wants to rape your 11-year-old daughter or your 11-year-old sister, what are you going to do? You're going to hand them a condom and say, God bless you? Uh, if you do, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. And I hope God throws you in hell because you're an idiot. You're supposed to protect your family. Okay? And in the Levitical law, 
If somebody broke into your house at night and you killed them, you were innocent of their blood. I could quote it. I could go to the verse. But you know what? It's common sense, people. And if you don't have common sense, go climb an electrical pole and touch some wires. I mean, what can I tell you? You know, it's like... There's a war coming, people. It's, but it's not just a physical war. It's a spiritual war. Satan knows who God's chosen people are, and he wants them dead. So let's take a look at a few things. Now, if you read the 22nd chapter of Luke, Jesus is in the garden. They're getting ready to take him for the trial to crucify him. Uh, so let's read it. Then said he, Jesus, then said he unto them, the disciples, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script. Script is money. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Okay? He told the disciples to be armed. Buy a sword. Okay? Now if you keep reading the narrative, Peter pulls out the sword. Um, maybe it's not Luke. Maybe it's in Matthew. Maybe it's in Mark. I I don't remember which one it is. But he cuts off the ear of uh, one of the uh, temple uh, helpers. And Jesus restored the guy's ear, healed him. I mean, he, Peter was trying to cut the guy's head off, right? And Jesus said, put thy sword into thy place. Matter of fact, we could read that. Yeah, let's go ahead and read that. Let's take a look real quick. Um, all right, uh, verse 30, Luke 22, verse 37. For I say unto you that it is written, must yet be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Uh, let's see. Let's go down. Okay. Verse 47. And while he yet spake, behold a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? You ever heard, you know, the thing with the mafia, the kiss of death? You know, that they'd always kiss the guy before they killed him? This is where they get the stuff from, in the mafia, you know. Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? And, let's see, when they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Now, this is Peter. You find out from another gospel that it was Peter, right? I'll guarantee you, Peter was not aiming for the guy's ear. He was probably aiming to cut off his head. But he missed. Um, so, and Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Uh, it, when you read the other account, Jesus told him, Put thy sword into thy place. Maybe I'll look it up real quick. All right, here it is, Matthew 26. I knew it was in one of these things. Verse 50, And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? And they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them, which were with Jesus, stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear, chopped it off. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Okay? If you make your living... By killing people, you're a hitman for the mafia. That's how you're, you know, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Peter didn't live by the sword. He was a fisherman, okay? But if somebody wants to break in your house and rape or and murder your 11-year-old sister or your 11-year-old daughter, I'm not, sorry, I'm not going to stand there and watch them do it, okay? And say, God bless you. Jesus loves you. That's idiocy. That's, that's not the gospel. That's... That's stupidity. All right, so, uh, put up again thy sword into his place. He didn't say throw the sword away, did he? He said put it in his place, put it in the sheath. 
put the sword away. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he sh shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? So, you know, it's... He didn't tell him to throw the sword away. He said, put it up in its place. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1. Now this is the, well, it's self-explanatory. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Why? Because the original, this one, is polluted with blood and murder and fornications and witchcraft and all kinds of evil stuff. And if you don't believe me, pick up the newspaper and read it sometime. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem. Not the old Jerusalem. The old Jerusalem is wicked. They have gay pride parades every year for like the last 10, 11, 12 years. Something like that. Why is there a new Jerusalem? Because the old one's polluted. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, and this is Christ, okay? Christ is a king sitting on a throne. I get so sick of hearing churches saying, Oh, Christ sits on the throne of our heart. Oh, no, he's going to have a throne. And let me tell you what, every, every king that sits on a throne, a throne has a kingdom, and every kingdom has laws. Okay? And when every law has a penalty, because if a law doesn't have a penalty, it's a, it's a suggestion. Okay? And it's not the Ten Suggestions, it's the Ten Commandments. And when you command somebody, a general commands an army. He doesn't make suggestions. Well, guys, what I think you ought to do is uh, invade Germany. You know, I, I, I think that's what we ought to do in World War II. No, it's a commandment, okay? And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha, the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Omega, the last alpha letter of the Greek alphabet. Not Hebrew, not the Aleph Talif. Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek. Where did Paul go? Greece. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the last seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. So now we're going to find out who is the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy, holy Jerusalem, 
descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a great wall and high and had twelve gates. Twelve gates. Not Bill Gates. Twelve gates. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And had a great wall and high and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written there thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Wow. So there's 12 gates, the names are written, the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Why is that important? Well, let's keep reading. On the east, three gates, and on the north, three gates, and on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, who replaced Judas. Okay. Twelve gates, twelve foundations, twelve apostles, twelve tribes of Israel. Who did Jesus die for? Well, I know the, what the uh, demon nominational churches teach. Let's go to John chapter 3, starting in verse 12. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Now this is Jesus speaking. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And Jesus called himself the Son of Man many times. Okay? And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, now if you've never read the book of Exodus, you should, okay? The Bible is a complete book. The Bible doesn't start in Matthew, okay? And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. For whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16, the most probably the most famous verse in the Bible today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Oh yeah. Jesus isn't going to condemn you. You're condemned already if you don't believe on him. So did Jesus, you know, for God so loved the world? Well, yeah. But are there things that God hates? Let's take a look. Let's go to Malachi. Malachi is the last book in the King James Bible of the Old Testament, just before Matthew, chapter 1. The Burden of the Word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Okay? Verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. And I hated Esau. And I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And if you don't know what a man's heritage is, the Bible plainly says a man's heritage is his 
children. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. God hated Esau. And if you don't know why, do a search on my website, on my channel, and look up Esau, E-S-A-U, and I did an hour, probably an hour something, study on Esau. You see, Esau hated God, and God was probably just returning the favor. So, but Esau did a sin that just totally destroyed everything. Okay, Psalms 127, verse 3. Low children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. The Bible says children are a blessing. The world says, oh, pff, don't mess with that garbage. Uh, have an abortion. You know, there's too many people in the world. Let's, let's, let's kill that fetus. Yeah, let's kill that fetus. You don't want to have children. Do you know the average age of the white people now, is, I heard, was 55 years old? The average age of the white person is 55 the average age of the Hispanics is, I think it was like 20-something. A lot of people don't know it, but the, the Aztecs used to use do human sacrifice and cannibalism. And their capital was uh, where the modern-day Mexico City is located. The Aztecs that did human sacrifice and cannibalism are the modern day descendants. Their modern day descendants are called Mexicans. One in three Mexicans live in Mexico City, and that was the capital of the Aztec Empire, where they did human sacrifice and cannibalism. And their average age is in the 20s. The average white person's age is 55, from what I read. What does that tell you? Hmm, I wonder why they want un all why do the wicked rulers all want these this unlimited third world immigration from Mexico? Why are they so against Trump when he says, "Oh, I want to build a wall." And I'm not sure Trump will even do it. I mean, that could be just something he says, you know, election time. Um, you know, I've been watching presidential elections since 1976 and um, let me tell you something what politicians say before the election and what they do after the election is always 180 degrees it's the opposite oh yes i'm going to do this this and this and they always do that 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 and that they always lie they always do the opposite of everything that they promised and said that they would do matter of fact um we should throw them out of office for, you know, false, what is it, false, whatever, you know. False misrepresentation, you know. All right, so let's take a look. So, does God love the whole world? Uh, he doesn't love Esau. Nope, sure doesn't, does he? Go to Obadiah chapter 1. Now, one of the names of Esau was Edom. I guess I better prove that. No, there's a reason why the um, new Bible promoters want you to get rid of your King James Bible. It's because the Bible, the King James Bible, will, explains itself. I mean, if you read, um, for example, if you read Malachi, you know God hates Esau. Fine. But when you read Obadiah and it says, I'm going to destroy Edom, well, who's Edom? Well, go back to Genesis. Um, Genesis 25 and verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, and, pr and I pray thee that with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Esau is Edom. Uh, Genesis 32, verse 3. And Jacob sent messages before him to Esau his brother unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Genesis 36, 1. 
Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Uh, Genesis 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Okay? I mean, Esau is Edom. Okay? In Obadiah 1 and verse 8. Well, let's let's see where we're going to go with this. Um, all right, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Do you know any group of people that are small, small in numbers among the heathen? Think about it. There's hundreds of millions of Arabs. There used to be hundreds of millions of whites. There's hundreds of millions of Negroes in Africa. There's a billion Chinese. There's a almost uh, 800 million Indians. Japan has half the population of the United States in their tiny little country. What group of people is tiny among the heathen? Um, take a look in the synagogue. Just a little hint there. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Uh, let's see. Let's skip to verse 8. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out of the mount of Esau? Uh, let's see. Let's skip to verse 17. But mounts, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. Isn't New Jerusalem, that, that holy Jerusalem, that holy city? Oh yeah, we just read that in Revelation 21, right? But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, for the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob, now Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. Do you know what stubble is? It's something useless that you burn. It's something that you, you use to start a fire. And the house of Jacob shall be a, fl a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. Kindle means to, to, to start a fire. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Does that sound does that sound like the Lord loves the whole world? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Um, did, did, did the Lord change his mind from Obadiah and Malachi and all of a sudden, you know, in John 3.16, well, you know, I hated Esau and, and they're going to burn up, but, you know, now I change my mind. You know, I've had idiot churches tell you that the God of the Old Testament and Jesus in the New Testament are two different gods. Oh yeah, that was God the Father in the Old Testament. He was evil and cruel and vengeful and, and murderous. And then along comes his son in the New Testament and Jesus is just so loving and kind and he's going to save us from that evil, wicked father of his. I've had churches tell, tell us this. No. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Believe it, people. Now, I'm a firm believer in getting your beliefs and doctrines from the, uh, the Bible. And I know all these, the lies that are out there. And I try not to stray too far from the Bible. I try not to. Okay, sometimes you've got to make a connection between 
current events and past history. But, you know, and then you got people saying, well, you know, the Jews are Israel. The Jews are all of Israel. Well, in the book of Titus, and there's a big, big, big push on to discredit Paul. This is Paul's writing, Titus, chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh, Paul warns, not giving heed. To heed something means to listen. Not giving heed. In other words, do not listen. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Do you know what Paul's basically saying here, don't listen to the Jews? Jewish fables? I mean, really? So, let's take a look at a few things. Did you know that God divorced Israel? But not Judah. Yeah, there were 12 tribes. Judah was the tribe of the kings. Levi, of which Moses was, was the tribe that served in the temple. They were the ones that did the animal sacrifices. Well, there were 10 other tribes. Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin. So, did you know that Israel, the 10 northern tribes, uh, split off from Judah in Jerusalem? They were two different kingdoms, two different sets of kings, um, two different peoples. They had wars against each other. But listen to this, Jeremiah verse, chapter 3, and verse 8. God speak, speaking. And when I saw, I'm sorry, and I saw when, for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, spiritual adultery, right? And I saw when, for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel for her spiritual adultery and wickedness. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, and but went and played the harlot also. A harlot is a whore, okay? Um, maybe not necessarily a prostitute who does it for money. I mean, a harlot doesn't even consider herself valuable. She just gives it away, you know, just to have fun. At least a prostitute considers herself of some value and charges. And I'm not, I'm not defending prostitution or harlots. I'm just pointing out the difference between a, you know, a harlot and a prostitute. So... God divorced Israel. Oh, yeah. All right, go to the book of Hosea. And um, this is one of those books in the, they call the Minor Prophets because they're minor in size, not a minor of importance. And your churches hope that you never read this kind of stuff because when, they, when you start asking questions to the pastor, his theology won't let him tell you the truth. It won't make sense. He'll, he just, you know, the questions that you'd be asking, he'd have to lie, and you'd say, That's, that can't possibly be true, because they're lying. Okay? Hosea chapter 1. We're going to skip around a little bit. Chapter uh, Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jothan, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, okay, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. You see, you had Uzziah, Jothan, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and then you had Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. They had, Israel and Judah had different kings. They're not the same people. Your pastor, your church, they lie. Oh, Jews and Israel, same thing. No, they're not. It's like calling a, a, somebody of the Confederacy a Yankee. It doesn't work, people. So the, 
the uh, verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said unto Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms, and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. All right, so the Lord told Hosea, take a wife, take a whore for a wife. I mean, spiritual application, Hosea is like being, in a, in a way, he's being compared to the Lord taking a wife that was a whore, and that was Israel. Spiritual application, right? So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Dibliam, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and I will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. You see, Israel is going to cease as a house and as a kingdom. And if you read... Um, Northern Israel was taken into captivity by Assyria. And then the southern kingdom was taken into captivity by Babylon. Now, when Babylon came to power, they destroyed the Assyrian Empire. Well, all the Israelites were taken out of their land and taken to Assyria as slaves. Well, then what happened was, when Babylon came along and destroyed the Assyrian army, and destroyed Judah and took, uh, when you read the book of Daniel, well, that he was of the tribe of Judah, and he went to Babylon. And they took him as slaves, as punishment from the Lord for their wickedness. Not necessarily Daniel, but, you know, the nation as a whole. But Israel, who was divorced of the Lord, was taken into captivity by Assyria. Well, when the Assyrian army was destroyed and defeated, okay, the Israelites uh, hightailed it out of Assyria. Where did they go? Well, where did they go? They went somewhere, okay. Um, according to history, they went to the Caucasus Mountains. That's where we get the word Caucasian. Whitey. Okay. Let's see, verse 5. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call his name Loru Hama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. God's going to take away the house of Israel. He's going to cast them out. Remember, he divorced them. Verse 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the, by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow, bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned, Lord Yuhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. See, God divorced. He got bent out of shape. He says, Yup, you're not my people, and I'm not going to be your God. Verse 10. Yet the ch number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Ooh. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. You see, God divorced Israel. He cast them away. He says, You're not my people anymore. And, it, and he says, And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. And what happens when you're in Christ? We're called the sons of the living God. Verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. That's going to be Christ. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day 
of Jezreel. Now you know why the churches don't want us to read the Old Testament. Oh yeah, God divorced Israel, but not Judah. All right, so God divorced Israel. He promises them that in the future they would be his people again. Okay, that was like 400 and something years in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. They call it the silent period. And then all of a sudden, this crazy guy wearing goat skins comes along called John the Baptist and says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then Christ comes to the river Jordan and he holds out his hand and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. In Matthew 15, 24, Jesus speaking, But he answered and said, I am not sent, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Is Jesus sent to the whole world? I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel was divorced. And yet they were promised that they would be called the sons of the living God. How many gates to the new Jerusalem? Twelve. For the twelve tribes of Israel. Where's the thirteenth Gentile gate? Where is it? There's no thirteenth Gentile gate. Don't they love to tell you, oh, Gentile, that means you're a non-Jew. It doesn't mean that. The word Gentile means nations. In, in the, um, it means, Gentiles means nation, Gentile means nation, Gentiles means nations, plural. Sometimes heathen, sometimes it was talking about Israel. And when you go to the Greek, the word nations is ethnos. It's where you get the word ethnic group, race. In John 10, 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. In Galatians 3, 28 and verse 29, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ, Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Who was Abraham? Abraham was the grandfather of Jacob Israel. It says if you're in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. It doesn't say you've spiritually become, does it? Jesus said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, let's take a look at something. So who was Abraham? God promised Abraham he'd be the father of many nations. Many nations. Genesis 17 and verse 5. Neither shall thy name be called, I'm sorry, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Many nations. If the Jews are all of Abraham, then where are these, all these many Jewish nations? Where are they? There's only one, and it was created by that satanic, antichrist, United Nations. So, there's only one, and one is not many. Okay? If I tell you I'm going to uh, bring you many pieces of candy, and I bring you one, I mean, you're going to say, oh, Bob, you're, you lied to me. You said you were going to bring me a lot of many pieces of candy, but you only brought me one. Where's all these many Jewish nations? Either God lied, which is impossible, or the Jews are not all of Israel. 
And like I said, Judah and Israel are not the same people. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. One tribe does not equal many. Okay? And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. In Psalms 119, 176, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Isaiah 53 and verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jeremiah 50 and verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. Why were they lost? They were divorced. They were cast out. They were thrown out. God had Assyria come and take them out of the land. He divorced them. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Who are their shepherds? These churches. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Why did they forget their resting place? Because God had the Assyrians come and took them out of the land. And they, Israel never returned to the land. When God sent Judah into captivity, after 70 years, he let them return. They returned to the land. You can read about it in the book of um, Nehemiah and the book of Ezra. Very important. In John 14 and verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when these people tell you that Jews have another covenant that they get to the Father without Jesus, they're telling you they're denying the New Testament and they're not denying Jesus. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John chapter 10 verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Verse 7, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Verse 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus is the great shepherd. We're the sheep and we went astray. Now, I want you to think about something. Paul was ordained by Christ to go and preach the gospel. Where did he go? He went all over the Mediterranean. He went to Greece. Thessalonians was written to Thessalonica, a city in Greece. Um, Ephesians, Ephesus was a city in Greece. Okay, Galatia. Some Bible scholars say Galatia was uh, Gaul, which was France. According to traditions, Paul went to England to Glastonbury and preached the gospel. And let's face it, people, what did England do? They printed the King James Bible. Okay, Europe and England and America, we're the ones that built the churches, we're the ones that print, printed the Bibles, we're the ones that spread the gospel all over the world. Why is it racist to point this, this out? Why? Why? It, it wasn't Japan. It wasn't China. It wasn't Burma. It wasn't North Korea. No, was it? No. Did, did people from the Congo come to the United States and preach unto us Jesus? No. What about uh, Zimbabwe or Rhodesia or, uh, you know, Niger or, you know... No, no, they didn't. Did, did, did people from uh, Mexico come and, and preach the gospel to us? No. 
No. And the Mormons, the the, the idiot Mormons want you to think that uh, the Indians, the American Indians, were the lost tribes of Israel. They never had the gospel until until the white man came to America. Why is it racist to, to say this? Why? Why is it black lives matter, but white lives don't? Why is that racist? And where did Paul go? He went to Rome. He went all over the Mediterranean and Europe. Let's face it, Rome is Europe. And for those of you that don't know it, the New Testament was written in Greek, and the Greeks spread the gospel all over Eastern Europe, Romania, Russia. That's They spread the gospel all over. Sadly, the, um, the Church of Rome became what is modern day the Vatican. They were corrupted. So, all right, let's take a look. Let's read Romans 11, verse 1. Now remember, Gentiles means nations. Remember that. In the Greek word, it means ethnos, ethnic group, race. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Hath, didn't we read in Hosea, God divorced Israel? I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Esaias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. And this is Elijah, by the way. Elias is the Greek rendering for uh, Elijah. And I did a hour and 40 minute study on Elijah. Very interesting. You should listen to it sometime. You know, I don't do this for my health. I get death threats. I don't do this for money. Do you ever hear me asking for money? No. No. You turn on TBN, that's all they do is ask for money. I ask for your prayers. That's all I ever ask for. What ye not what the scripture saith of Isaiah, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. And what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there is also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace there is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace, but it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Do you know what an election is? An election is when you make a choice. God made a choice. God has a chosen people. Oh, oh, yeah. But the modern churches want you to think those are the people that hate Jesus. That's what they want you to think. Oh, yeah, God's chosen people. Those are the people that hate Jesus. Well, if God cho God's chosen people are people that hate his son... That doesn't make much sense to me. What can I tell you? Verse 8. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see and bow down their back alway. I say then, hath they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles, the nations, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, Israel was divorced, but Judah was not. And the Jews were jealous. 
that the Greeks and the um, uh, the, the Samaritans, Samaria was the capital of Israel. Remember the, the, the story of the Good Samaritan? The Jew passed by the guy that was was injured and, and dying. But the Samaritan, he stopped and had mercy on the guy and, and tended to his wounds and took him to an inn and paid the guy and says, you know, take care of him and when I come back, I'll pay you more of what I owe. Take care of this guy. But the Jew passed, passed by. Matter of fact, we'll take a look at that. But rather... Through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of, of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them, God divorce Israel, right? For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches." Didn't Jesus say he was the root and offspring of David in, in Revelation 22? Yes. I am the root and offspring of David. So Jesus was not only the root of David, he was not only the father, basically, of David, but he was also the son of David. Figure that one out. Ask that to a Jehovah's Witness. They'll, they'll freak out. Uh, for if the fruit first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, yeah, they were, Israel was divorced. And thou being a wild olive tree, the wild olive tree was Israel, people. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Let's take a look at that real quick. All right, uh, let me prove that to you. In Jeremiah uh, chapter 11, verses 16 and 17, the Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair. There's that racial word again. Fair and of goodly fruit with the noise of a great tumult. He hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. Didn't we just read that about the branches being broken? For the Lord of hosts that planted thee, for the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, for they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. Baal was Satanism. All right, so I think that is, uh, you know, that's that should be enough to uh, prove my point. So let's go back to Romans 11. 11, 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. You know, the branches don't bear the root. The root holds the branches up, okay? Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Therefore, behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in its goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, 
if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Why? Because God divorced them. For if thou wert cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, oh yeah, boy, I was a wild olive tree when I was in my teens and 20s. I don't know about you, but I was. Um, for if thou wert cut off, uh, cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. What was the mystery? In Hosea, where, where God said he would divorce, well, he divorced Israel, and then he was going to bring them back. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Let's trade that word Gentile for nations because it's sometimes they translate the word Gentile, sometimes they use the same word and translate it nations. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the nations be come in. You see, Judah is part of Israel, but not all of Israel is Judah. All people, all the Americans in Texas are Americans, but not all Americans are Texans, right? Well, what is this blindness in part has happened to Israel? They'll tell you, oh, well, that's because God blinded the Jews, did not accept Jesus Christ. That's the demon nominational teaching. But could it be that when Israel is blinded, that they're blinded to their identity? You see, Israel never, when Israel went into the Assyrian captivity, they never returned to their land. They went somewhere. They went somewhere. Where did they go? Did they go to Greece? Did they go to Rome? Did they go to Galatia? Did they go to Ephesus? Thessalonians? The, where Paul? Paul, where did Paul go? Did Paul go to Japan? No. Did Paul go to China? No. Did Paul go to India? No. Did he go to Mexico? No. Where did Paul go? The apostle of the nations, the Gentiles. Where did he go? Is the blindness in part has happened to Israel? Did Israel, were they blind to who they were? Is that what this means? That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and that's Christ, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jacob is Israel. For this is my covenant with them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Now, there are Jews that are, there's a remnant, and then there are Jews that are not. And we'll cover that in a minute. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as, in, for as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them and them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath given first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. And of him and through him 
and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. So is the blindness of the Gentiles, the nations, is that Israel forgetting who they are? I don't know. So Galatians 3, 28 and 29, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. John 10 and verse uh, 20, we'll start in 23. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You see, Jesus' sheep hear his voice. Here's a verse, Jesus speaking in Revelation 2.9. You'll never hear it in John Hagee's church. Jesus speaking. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasph blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And just like you got fake churches, you got fake Jews. It's, it's sad, but it's, it's, it's a fact. There are people that claim to be Jews, but they serve Satan. And there are a lot of churches that serve Satan too, but they, uh, they try to hide it. So let me ask you a question. Why can't Christians be God's chosen people? Why not? Why is it racist? Why are they flooding our lands, all the formerly white Christian lands, why are they flooding them with all these third world heathen aliens? Is it racist to, to bring this up? Do only black lives matter? What about white lives? You know, just something to think about. And if the white Christians are the children of Israel, guess what? We're going to be the object of Satan's wrath in the coming tribulation. Oh yeah, think about it. If the Jews are God's chosen people, and in the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, Jacob Israel, the time of Jacob's trouble, what's called the tribulation, they'll be the object of Satan's wrath. But if the white Christians are the object of Satan's, you know, if we're the chosen people, well then we're going to be the object of Satan's wrath. So let's take a look at that real quick. In Revelation chapter 12, and verse 17, And the dragon, this is Satan, and the dragon was wroth. Wroth is angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, if we have the testimony of Jesus and we keep his commandments, and, you know, Jesus gave us the two commandments. Um, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. Uh, he changed the law, not Paul. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Who's going to be... 
who's going to be persecuted in the um, time of the you know the tribulation, which is Revelation talks about a lot. Those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ, that's who's going to be persecuted. So, why can't Christians be God's chosen people? Why not? Why is it racist to, to bring that up? Oh, that's right. Because the dragon was wroth with the woman that had the, kept the commandments and had the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's why. So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.